The Department of Homeland Security recently placed New York and Washington, D.C. on a heightened state of alert due to new terror information. Officials, however, urged Americans not to change their routines, but to go about normal business. While my next guest says frequent changes to the color alert system have left Americans justifiably skeptical about the heightened threat, and he says the government has cried wolf too many times. Ivan Eland is the director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute in California and joins us tonight from San Francisco. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. So you, you fall on the side of the argument that it's a hysterical response rather than a realistic response. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think that uh, these alert levels, these colors, really don't mean much because it's, it's sort of been politicized. I mean, the, the uh, government officials tend to overwarn us because they don't want to be held responsible if there's an attack and they didn't over, you know, they didn't warn us. So we never see the alert system go to blue or green because, uh, you know, they would, uh, uh, they'd be in danger of, uh, you know, uh, ha having the defenses down, letting the terrorists attack, and then they would be blamed after the fact. On the other end of the spectrum, it never goes to red because people would be too panicked. So we toggle between yellow and orange, and we don't always toggle when they get these uh, intelligence uh, warnings. Uh, it seems to be, you know, every so often. So the public really doesn't know what to do on yellow versus orange. So uh, it seems to be a little uh, like the government just coming along and saying, be alert, but keep shopping. Yeah. What do you think in this last alert they should have gone to red? Do you think No, they I don't think that? so. I don't think so. I don't think they should have gone off yellow, frankly, because I think first they said it was based on new information, then they said it was based on old information, and then they got criticized for that. So now they're trying to stress that it was based on information and new information and that they got this uh, British uh, guy who uh, the guy in Britain uh, but and that's all well and good. Let's catch Al Qaeda. But what does that have to do with warning our citizens here at home? And I think they really need to uh, do a better job. The last time they did this, uh, John Ashcroft, the Attorney General, strangely did it instead of Tom Ridge. And the information that he gave us was from a website, uh, which uh, of a group that never attacks anybody, but just puts out different disinformation. So he was kind of discredited in the last thing. So the government hasn't had a very good track record on this. Uh, and so many citizens are saying, well, is this just for politics or, or, or is this real? And there's a legitimate question with an election coming up, I think. You're uh, charging basically the administration with politicizing the terrorism threats, but aren't both candidates doing it at this point? Isn't it not, well, is it think, not a campaign issue? Yes, I'm not saying it's just Bush, but it's been thrown into the political arena. And frankly, uh, security is mixing with politics, and uh, that's no normal for an election year, but even more so this year because national security is such a big issue in the campaign. Ivan, let me ask you, though, in the, the, the method of operation of al-Qaeda seems to be collect, to collect data over a period of years, and they have proven that they were collecting for a long time before this September 11th attack. So isn't it legitimate that some old information is also still valid, that old data is not useless data? Oh, certainly, I think. But I think you have to have new data uh, and an imminent uh, threat before you uh, warn the people because this is a serious business and people get uh, scared and they alter their routines and that sort of thing. I mean they're not so much anymore because I think most people are saying this is a cry wolf situation but nonetheless some people do get spun up and the other uh, hidden cost is municipal police departments uh, really uh, have to pay a lot of money to go on heightened alerts, so it costs local governments a lot of money which the federal government doesn't give them uh, uh, back. Ivan, what would you suggest though? I mean, it's, it's something to criticize the current system. What would you prefer to see? Well, I think I don't, I never thought this uh, color-coded system uh, was very effective because it, it doesn't really tell the public what to do. I would just say, let's go back to the old system where if the intelligence authorities in Washington uh, find a localized threat to New York, Washington, Cleveland, Miami, what, what city, you, lo you uh, identify the threat, you call the local police, and you get the security beefed up there. But we don't have to have this system. This system is mainly to show that the government's doing something about the problem. What we really want to do is see what the government does. And uh, I don't mind them alerting local police forces, but I think we have to be careful about uh, spinning up entire cities, states, uh, and maybe even the whole country over some of these things. We need, uh, we need to uh, quit doing that. All right. Thanks very much for your comments this evening, Ivan Elan. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up.